Hello and welcome back. And we're going to talk about something new. And we're going to talk about the inverses of sine, cosine, and tangent functions. Now, here are some old properties to remember from college algebra and the first pre-calculus course dealing with inverses. F inverse of f of x is equal to x for every x in the domain of f and f of f inverse of x for every x in the domain of f inverse. Now, for two, number two, the domain of f is equal to the range of f inverse and the range of f is equal to the domain of f inverse. And number three, the graph of f and the graph of f inverse are reflections of one another about the line y is equal to x. And we're going to see this in just a moment in one of the graphs. For if a function y is equal to f of x has an inverse function, the implicit equation of the inverse function is x is equal to f of y. If we solve this equation for y, we obtain the what? The explicit equation of y is equal to f inverse of x. Let's look at the graph. The inverse sine function here. And as you notice, a few things going on in the graph. We see that y is equal to sine x. And it's from negative infinity less than x less than positive infinity, which is, in this case, the domain of this graph. And we have what? For the range, negative 1 less than or equal to y less than or equal to positive 1. As we see figure A, the horizontal line in this case, which y is equal to b, where b is between negative 1 and positive 1, inclusive now. It intersects the graph infinitely many times. Now, if we look at this and we come from negative infinity and we continue on to what? Positive infinity. Here's what's taking place. When we draw the line, you remember the horizontal line test in, in the earlier courses, is hitting this infinitely many times. Y is equal to sine x is not one to one. Because of that reason, because it's hitting the graph many, many times. When you draw this horizontal, Y is equal to be here. It's hitting the graph infinitely many times. So therefore, that's what makes Y is equal to sine x not one to one. Now, in order to analyze and try to get or understand y is equal to sine x, well, the inverse of this, you have to do something special. You have to restrict the domain. You have to restrict the domain of y is equal to sine x. How are we doing it? Well, we restricted it. You see this color coded in red? This is the domain from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, you see this, right? From here to here. So you have to just restrict it. So now y is equal to sine x. And if you see right here, we have restricted it by drawing it separately, taking the piece out of here and actually moving it to here. We see that negative pi over 2 less than or equal to x, less than or equal to what? Pi over 2 now is one to one and will have an inverse. This is considered figure B right here. And so, of course, this is your domain. And of course, your domain, and this is your range from negative one to positive one. So we see when we draw the horizontal line through the graph, it hits it one time. Now it's one to one and now it has an inverse. Now, if we look at this, and even if we draw a vertical line, we know it's a function because it hits it one time, right? But going into this now, we see that the equation 
for the inverse of y is equal to f of x is equal to sine x is obtained by interchanging what? As we used to do back in the earlier courses, interchanging x and y. And the implicit form of the inverse function is x is equal to sine y with the domain in this case negative pi over 2 less than or equal to y less than or equal to pi over 2. And the explicit form is called the inverse of x and is symbolized by y is equal to sine The inverse is equal to sine inverse of x. So, looking at this and continuing to look at this, let's look at the graph. Remember number, number three, the graph of f and the graph of f inverse are reflections of one another about the line y is equal to x. Well, here's your picture right here of this. And so, remember, the domain of a function f equals the range of its inverse, f inverse, and the range of the function f equals the domain of its inverse, or f inverse, because the restricted domain of sine function is, the restricted domain, remember we talked about the restricted domain, negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, and with the range of the inverse sine function, the inverse sine function is negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. And because the range of the sine function is negative 1 to 1, and the domain of the inverse sine function is negative 1 to 1. Now look at this very closely. Look at the line or the curve in red. That is y is equal to f of x, which is equal to what? Sine. And look at its domain. The domain is going to be from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And its range is going to be from negative what? 1 to 1. Now look at, look at the f inverse, which is equal to sine inverse x. And this is in blue. And its domain is going to be from negative 1 to 1. You see the flip-flop, like the reflection. And the range of that is going to be negative pi over 2 to what? Pi over 2. Now, I want to do another note. And I want to clarify something in other words. The inverse of the function f receives as input an element from the range of f and returns as output an element in the domain of f now. The restricted sine function y is equal to f of x is equal to sine x receives as input an angle or real number x in the interval, right, from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 and outputs a real number in the interval Right, from negative 1 to 1. Therefore, now, the inverse sine function y is equal to sine inverse x receives as input a real number in the interval negative 1 to positive 1. Or, if you, you know, you can say negative 1 less than or equal to x less than or equal to what? Positive 1. Its domain and outputs an angle or real number in the interval from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, or you can say it like this, negative pi over 2 less than or equal to y less than or equal to pi over 2. And that's its range. Now, the graph of the inverse sine function can be obtained by reflecting the restricted portion of the graph of y is equal to f of x equal to sine x about the line y is equal to x, as you see right there in figure c right over there. So that's very, very, very important. So we're going to talk about finding the exact value of an inverse sine function. So, ladies.
picture of these notes right here. And also, we're going to be talking about this. If we find the exact value of the inverse or side inverse of 1, right? We want to find the exact value of sine inverse of 1. And we want to let theta equal sine inverse of 1. And we want to seek an angle of theta. We want to seek that. Which is between the intervals negative pi over 2 less than equal theta. Less than or equal to what? Pi over 2. Negative pi over 2, less than or equal to theta, less than or equal to pi over 2. Whose psi equals what? 1. So look at this very closely. Theta equals psi inverse of 1 on the interval of negative pi over 2, less than or equal to theta, less than or equal to pi over 2, means the same thing as sine theta is equal to 1, which is on the interval of negative pi over 2, less than or equal to theta, less than or equal to what? Pi over 2. Now, as you look at the chart right here, the chart is set up with theta and sine theta. Theta is what? Consider in this particular case the domain which you have in between here, the, the boundaries, the restrictions of negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And all the values in between that, which has to come in between, right? And also theta, sine theta, which is considered the range in this case, is going to be from negative 1 to positive 1. Now let's look at something real quick here. And we see that the only angle theta within the interval, right, negative pi over 2, the pi over 2, whose sine is 1, it is pi over 2. Let's note that sine phi, sine, the sine of 5 pi over 2, also equals 1 as well. And that's because here, when you hit this point on the graph, it is what? One. Now, but hold up a second. One or five pi over two, sine five pi over two, lies on the outside of this interval here. So it's inadmissible. And, it, and you cannot have this extended all the way because this makes this graph not what? One to one. It is no longer, it no longer has an inverse. However, we have to look in the restrictions right here, which is the domain restriction of negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So, in this particular case now, since this is restricted, now we can consider the inverse. And sine inverse 1, as we look here, is going to equal to pi over 2 because it lies within the interval and in this case negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 is inclusive. So this concludes this part of the, of the uh, video of finding the inverse of sine, cosine, and tangent functions. And stay tuned because we're going to continue working another problem, and we're going to continue talking about other functions too as well.